Hi guys, welcome to the Third Style Garage. My name is Doug. Today we're gonna to be talking about the importance and how to get cool, dry shop air. Thanks for tuning in. Today we are in the upper level of the third stall garage. It is a bit of a mess. I've got the seats out of my Mustang, trim, chrome pieces, tops, a rusty old hood, some fenders and doors, and uh, the car is literally a basket case and a milk crate and plastic tub case. And I've got some chrome pieces over here as well, some old 57 Chevy parts, but today, Talking about shop air. Shop air is really important for running tools, sandblaster, uh, grinders, paint, things like that. Um, I have installed a cooler on my compressor and today I wanna show you how I did that. The compressor used to run uh, stock. The hot air would come directly out of the compressor and go right down into the tank. Now compressed air is extremely hot. The act of compressing it um, causes the temperature to rise greatly. Uh, some pretty solid physics behind that. That also causes moisture to condensate in the air, which then collects in the bottom of your tank. Uh, you can provide a drain to drain that out. Um, and then you get nasty water that comes out and your tank can kind of rust out from the inside. The other thing is not all of the 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 moisture gets out as it um, comes out of the compressor you'll have warm moist air that's heading into your sand blaster to make the sand all clumpy or if you're doing painting that can kind of ruin your paint as well if you get bits of moisture or junk that's in your paint so dry clean shop air is good for your tools it's good for your processes and it's just it's nice to have in a in a shop so here's how I went about cooling and drying my shop air. Uh, I removed the tube that was coming out of here and going directly down into the tank. Uh, I increased the diameter of this. It was, uh, I think, a half inch before. This is five eighths now. And then went to a cooling system. So the, the hot air comes across here, drops down in, and then I have a low point at the very bottom right here where I can let out any air or any. So the compressed air comes down here and then goes into this kind of zigzag copper tube system. Now I have, I think about 50 feet of copper tubing that I just soldered together with elbows. I laid it on the ground, soldered them all square. And then as I mounted it with these cheap uh, plastic caps or, or brackets, I just simply stretched it up a little bit. I put a level on it so the the hot air as it travels up towards the top, any as it cools, any moisture that condensates out is slowly going to trickle its way back and drop out the bottom right here where I can drain it. Now eventually I'm going to plumb that through the floor down to the lower level so that when I turn my compressor on down below, I can just drain the water each time I do it as well. Once the hot air gets to the top, you'll see it circles back around and goes in the tank. Uh, at that point in time, I should have air that's cool. It's ambient temperature um, and the, the water will have it a chance to condensate out. Any, any water that does remain in the line because it's it's air that does contain moisture may still condensate out into the tank and if so then i'll be able to drain it at the bottom as well but i like to show you how it works in terms of dissipating the heat so right now it's a cool day in michigan it's about 40 degrees outside um if we measure the temperature of the pipe right now um you can see I'm at about 43 degrees on the out pipe and also 44 degrees on the return pipe. So I'm gonna fire up the compressor, let it run a cycle and we'll measure the difference. I'm gonna show you the results. The compressor just finished its first cycle 
And uh, if I read the temperature kind of on the head of it, we're looking, sorry, my hand is a little shaky. We're looking at 230, 240 degrees based on where we read. Um, and that makes sense because I can hardly put my hand on that thing and would not be able to keep it there for long. Um, temperature wise, this line feels very hot, kind of the whole way down. Um, and then if I look from the bottom, I can keep my hand on it for just a touch, a little longer, starting to get... All right, this is feeling pretty comfortable on a chilly day to keep my hands on. And these are just pretty much cold. I don't think these have changed temperature at all. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces that are about five feet long. So about 50 feet total of copper tubing. I bought it off uh, Facebook Marketplace. It was used, uh, cleaned it up, soldered it up. And uh, it was a really inexpensive way to create a cooler and a dryer for my compressor. And I recommend you to do the same. I forgot to talk about what fittings I used to connect the, the 5 8 inch diameter copper flexible pipe to the air compressor. I bought a package of these at Menards. They're 5 8 OD by half inch MIP. I think it's male iron pipe. That's the national pipe thread here, which screwed right into the tank and to the compressor head. The other side has a 5 8 compression fitting. Uh, you simply slide this little collar. Uh, actually, first you slide the large nut, then you slide the little collar over the 5 8 flexible copper tubing, screw it on, tighten it down, it seals up very nicely. Um, and you can thread this right in. It's an easy way to attach those to the compressor and to the, the cooling system. Uh, these were Sioux Chief, made by Tomahawk, part number, there you go, you can see it. Uh, but they're pretty standard fittings you can pick up at any hardware store. And then all of the rest of the fittings were just uh, solderable copper uh, elbows and unions and tees and stuff that you can pick up anywhere. And, um, sweating pipes not too hard. I didn't have any leaks when I put it together, which I was thankful for. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel for more shop updates as I continue to build out my dream shop, Third Stall Garage. Thanks. Have a great day. Hi, I'm filming this section about six months to a year after I finished this cooler dryer, but I wanted to update you on real life experience and what I've learned with it. Uh, overall, I love it. Uh, the only problem is I expected the majority of the water to flow back down the cooling system and drain out that right hand PEX line down to the uh, main floor where I, I let the water out. The theory being the hot air comes out of the compressor, goes down, turns the corner, flows up, the condensate cools out, flows back down, drops out that way. The dry air comes out of the top over there, comes out of the top, goes into the tank. The tank stays cool and dry. I do have a drain line here to catch any residual moisture that collects in the tank. What I'm finding is 95% of the water I drain out every time I drain it, which is every time I run it, is coming out of this line not this line. And there was a user who commented on my video suggesting I may have been wiser to run the air the other way, that the fast flow of air, sorry, the fast flow of air going up is carrying the moisture with it. And that maybe if I run it down, the moisture will then come here, drop out, instead of being carried up the vertical tube. So I'm in the process of disconnecting this from the compressor, this from the tank. I'm going to do my best to reverse those two, try it and let you know how it works. The lines are reversed. So the hot, moist air will come out of the compressor, run all the way down 
the cooling fins. The air will then turn, make a sharp left turn and go up steep up around the top, hopefully at the top of the point right about here. Most of the moisture will have fallen out and uh, gone back down through the floor and it will go out to the tube on the right, the blue tube on the right hand side, <clears throat> as opposed to going all the way through and falling into the tank, which then the moisture would come out the bottom and go to the middle tube. Let's see what it looks like downstairs and see how much water in uh, two cycles uh, it actually generated. Here are the three lines coming through my upstairs floor. So the left line feeds my system with the dry air out the side of the tank. The middle one comes from the bottom of the tank. The right hand one comes from the cooling system. So here are the two drain lines. Uh, the one on the left right here is the one that used to get the majority of the water out of it. For an evening of sandblasting, that's what we get. This is what comes out, that comes out of the bottom of the tank. This is what comes out of the cooler. I would say that reversing the flow of the cooler did capture more water but still a bunch of it's getting pushed all the way through into the tank. All right, to wrap up this video, um, a couple reflections on the cooler dryer system that I've, I've had, I've figured out about a year in the shop. Uh, I've got no evidence of any moisture getting to my air tools. Uh, when I blow clean parts off with my uh, you know, air gun, I'm not getting any moisture particles blowing out that I can see. I don't have any problems with tools rusting. Uh, I feel really good about the dry compressed air that I've got. I am running a separate dryer filter for painting um, just to, you know, really make sure that the air is dry. But uh, for all in all, most purposes, I'm happy with it. Um, in an ideal world, none of my moisture would be getting into the compressor tank. Uh, to decrease rusting inside the, the compressor tank. But uh, again, I've got a drain off the bottom that I drain every time that I run the compressor. So, you know, it's not the end of the world there. I, I'm getting the water out of the system. I'm just not keeping my compressor tank dry. 90% happy with it. Um, the only thing, if I had it to do all over again, and it's definitely not worth redoing, um, I would consider something like this, and I'm wondering if anybody's tried this. If uh, the air were to come in the bottom and I were to have maybe a one inch or, or inch and a half copper line along the bottom and then run T's with vertical lines. So I think my dryer upstairs goes back and forth like 10, 12 times. If I had those runs all vertical, so the air would be flowing up. I think this is how automotive radiators work. My In my head, the airflow would then disperse and flow up all of these. If there were 10 risers, like I only drew five here, the, the speed of the airflow would be decreased by tenfold. So it'd be at 10% of the rate, which may allow the moisture to drop out instead of being carried along and then the dry, cool air would exit at the top. Hindsight, I would build it kind of like this. So this was the low point of my system. Hot, moist air comes in here. This would get plumbed to the bottom with a valve to open and drop out. And the cool, dry air drops that way. Um, I don't know. It's an idea. If one of you does it, uh, tries it that way, let me know how it works. Um, again, the linear footage I've got of a copper pipe is great. It totally cools it off even in hot days and, um, it's an affordable way to build it. It's maintenance free. There's only one, you know, I've got two valves to, uh, drop the water out. So I don't have to have a valve at the bottom of each one. Um, pretty happy with it. So. Leave a comment below. I hope you have a great day. Uh, if you watch this soon, Merry Christmas. It's December 23. 
It's eight degrees out. Um, and I hope you and yours are doing well and are happy and safe. Be kind to one another and have a great day.